What was the likelihood of a New York actor who primarily did classics? I worked for Joe Papp at the Public, uh, San Diego Shakespeare, Hartford Stage, did a lot of regional theater, did a lot of theater on Broadway and off Broadway, but a classically trained actor. What were the odds of the first animated audition he's invited to do is the animation of Batman? You're not safe here. needed out there. I've been doing the character now for 20 years. The audience knows him as well as I do. They would know in a second if I did something inauthentic and they'd call me. And because of the kind of roles I played, Edgar in Lear, Edmund in Lear, um, Achilles, uh, Orestes, uh, Prince Hal, all of these classic epic heroes that the one role they would want me to read for is Batman who is, of all the DC characters, of all the animated universe, he is a classic Shakespearean type of actor. His whole life drama is a Greek drama. I mean, it's so epic. It's so... His parents killed. His... Oh, right. yeah. It's, yeah. It's a Greek drama. Doesn't mean I don't care anymore. I don't want to let you down, honest, but... But it just doesn't hurt so bad anymore you can understand that can't you look i can give money to the city they can hire more cops let someone else take the risk but it's different now please i need it to be different now i know i made a promise but i didn't see this coming I didn't count on being happy. When Bruce Timm was describing to me the character, because the only Batman I knew was the Adam West Batman in the 60s, mm. Bruce Timm said, no, 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 that's not what we're doing. We lo Everyone loves Adam West, but that's not what we're doing. <laughs> he said, no, and he, he described to me the character and the tragedy of the background. So I just put myself into, you know, just put in my imagination in the booth, I went to this place, and you know, this dark kind of broody voice. And I sort of found this character just in the audition, just improvising. You're everyone's problem. That's because every time you go up in the air, you're unsafe. I don't like you because you're dangerous. I'm dying very soon. Yes. I'm sorry. Could you stay with me? I'm scared. I was always trying to keep things light in the recording studio, and Andrea knew what I was doing. I was intentionally doing it because I was the unifying theme throughout all those shows. I was the one person who was in everything. And especially when there were so many guests coming in who had never done animation before, they didn't know what they were getting into. So if the person who was there was there for fun and was, you know, being a little bit of a bad boy, um, getting people laughing, it just broke the tension, and it, it made everyone act better. Andrea knew what I was doing. I was getting everyone to, you know, the juice is going. So she let me do it. She gave me a lot of leeway. And even Bruce, who's much more sober than Andrea, he, um, he learned, he realized after a while that it was good that I was a bit of a uh, cut up, you know, in there. But one day I, um, I was doing my grunts and groans, and it was a big group, and a lot of the people had never done any voiceovers before, and I was like, Andrea. I just said the director's name at the end of that like it was, you know, post-coital bliss. And the place, there was this hesitation by all these actors. They, and then everyone just cracked up. Everyone just roared. They couldn't believe what I had done. And then we looked.
look in the booth and like Andreas is just on like this, you know. Everyone was, everyone was just it was so funny. And then she said, uh, uh, "That's going on my holiday reel, Kevin." She said. <laughs>